So today in the shop, we're going to take our RD 400 1977 and do a compression check to test that the cylinders are not worn and that the compression in both cylinders is relatively the same within 10 to 15 pounds. It's a relatively simple job, but there's a few things that may make it easier for you. I've tried to include them on this video and it's something you should do from time to time. Now today in the shop, one of the things I'd like to show, we've been trying to do a lot of upgrades on the RD, get it ready for the cold winter. It's coming, it's already here, it's not coming. I wanted to do a compression test today and I thought that's one thing that would be appropriate to show on our, the little videos that we share. Now, for whatever reason, I've got about 11,000 miles on this bike since I bought it. And we did the top end about a thousand, according to the records, about a thousand miles into it. We put pistons and rings in it. So those have about 10,000 miles on them. And it, it's a good test right now. It's not a day that it's appropriate to ride. So what I thought would be a good thing, I can show how to do or how I've done it in the past, a compression test on a two stroke, relatively easy, straightforward thing to do. You need a tool that costs between 20 and $30. And then you can verify, you can also use it on other things, so you can verify that, that the top end of the motorcycle is either needing to be refreshed or that it's in good shape for another summer or winter or, in my case, the rest of my life. Just one other little detail. This is what I'm trying to show is I've been replacing these parts one by one. These fuel lines have gotten like rocks. You can't even squeeze them. You almost can't squeeze it with pliers. And what I did, of course, it's from Amazon. I bought a whole roll of the 516 and quarter inch. That, and as I work on the bikes over the winter, I'm going to replace the fuel lines with all brand new fuel lines that stay nice and soft and you can squeeze them. So basically, this is what you get when you buy a compression gauge. Again, they could be as cheap as $20, as much as I have, maybe even more than $30, but somewhere in a $20 to $30 range. It gives you all the adapters, the fittings, and of course, the most important thing, the gauge. The gauge will read the compression. We want to, at that point in time, release it just like you would with a tire pressure gauge. What we're looking for, the objective of all this, is to see that both cylinders are relatively the same, within 10 to 15 pounds. If one cylinder, as an example, is 30 pounds more than the other, we might need a rebore, re-ring, re-piston, whatever. We'd have to take it apart then. But if the cylinders are within 15 pounds of each other, yeah, we probably get another season out of it. Now, just to be fair, today in the shop, it is below freezing. Our fountain in front of the house froze up solid. So we have our new fuel lines all fit up. Now the next thing on this is bring it up to operating temperature. That's going to be a tough thing to do in this cold weather, but we'll get it done. Now, when it's running with the choke on, it's really smoky. <laughs> it's really cold out here today. And of course, with the new McCoy cars, we got two separate chokes to deal with. Now I've been checking the front of the engine by the exhaust pipe, making sure it comes up to operating temperature before we do this test. And it is bitterly, bitterly cold out here. Okay, we're up to operating temperature and it is ready. I am ready to get this over with. Woo! It is bitter out there. Oh my God, get my hands by this electric heater. My quartz heater saves the day, saves my bacon. So pretty simple, step one, take out both of the spark plugs, 
Now the engine is warm, and we'll be ready to do our test. By the way, another handy little tool, this is a Craftsman one, but I'm sure there are other ones, is a, a little laser thermometer. Now what I like to do is before I ever pull the plugs out, and you can, every time you do this, you see little pieces of leaf and pieces of bugs and whatever. Clean those spark plug areas. I just, the idea is I don't want to, when I take that plug out and put the gauge in, I don't want to have stuff dropping down into the engine. Hey, you may hear some background noise. There's, for the last week, they've been chopping down a tree behind my neighbor's house. And as soon as I go to shoot video, they start up their, their uh, equipment. Unbelievable. So anyway, you want to take the plugs out. Take a look at the plugs, of course. And it's time. We have to, first thing is to take both plugs out, of course. Now I've had extremely good luck with this bike over the last, and it's, I've had 11,000 miles on it already, that had no issues with the spark plugs. And I've used both NGK in the very beginning, regular BADS, and these iridium plugs, the iridium plugs are 10 bucks a piece, but they seem to really hold up well. So I, maybe when it's time to replace the plugs, I'll get more iridium plugs. But I know in the past when I've had RDs and two strokes, and you'd always w never go out on a ride without an extra set of plugs and a plug wrench. This bike's been very unique in the fact that it's not, it's not given me any indication it fouls plugs. Now, on an RD, you don't really need one of the adapters because the plug is the same as the, bat, the end of the tube, but it can be tricky if you don't want to take the tank off and save the time of taking the tank off. You've got to kind of do this twist. You don't need to get a wrench on this. It can be hand tight because there's a rubber gasket, and that takes care of that. So, all right, I just want to make it hand tight. Okay, so I've got the reading for cylinder one. Some bikes, it just pays to take take the tank off. This is a little, little bit of a nuisance. What I found helps, though, is I put the hose over by the quartz heater. Just let it warm up a little bit. And of course, the engine is still nice and warm. Anything nice and warm now, even coffee, even coffee would be well worth it. Now, keep in mind, this has a rubber gasket. So you, you need to get it tight, but not you sure don't have to put a pipe wrench on it or anything and you get you should get a consistent read now we do the other cylinder as long as we're in we're within 15 pounds 10 to 15 pounds 10 is good 15 is mm, maybe we'll be putting some pistons and rings in this I don't know until we do the other side and this is one of the little tricks I'm warming up the hose so I can get that bend in it just warm it up just a little bit that's all you need when it's below freezing like this though it's it's cold, Larry. What can I say? Okay, so we can get rid of that. Like that. Now it's a little bit easier to get that in. Well, on a four stroke, or if you have an electric starter, you'd want this to go around four times. It's a good idea on some engines to hold the throttle wide open. And eat. obviously you want to pack the cylinder with as much air. Now when I look at this, uh, we are not only close, we are exactly, exactly on the same number on both sides. And so, which I'm going to show the gauge. We are... Exactly. It couldn't be. It couldn't be off by one pound. So, I'm assuming that that's telling me that the top end is fine. Now, I also have, and I, I should have done this, and I didn't. I have a set, and I've used them in the past. I have a set of high compression heads that the late Kenny Augustine made for me when I was trying to make this a hot rod bike. Now I'm just trying to make it a daily driver and a and a keeper. So I'd like to have all the stock, everything stock as much as possible, even. Even to the point where I just want to get a lot of more, a lot more fun miles out of this. But anyway, uh, this this really gave me confidence that now 
we are going into the future with what should be a, a very healthy engine. So I recorded everything in my little log book and this tells me hopefully, uh, well, I think we are right, that we have a healthy engine and if one of those cylinders was reading really low, I'd be thinking it might be time for rings, but, and, and I'm not sure every bike is different, but hit, this is one thing I have had really good luck with these iridium plugs. And I know they're 10 bucks a piece instead of two or whatever regular ones are, but these have really, I think in, in that motorcycle, these have really worked well. So I think it was time well spent. I'll just take the gauge out. And, and keep in mind that there are, and I want to show this in fact, when, if you were to use one of the adapters, you'd put the adapter in the cylinder, of course, but at no point in this is there room for a wrench. And when they put knurls on things like this, it means they want you to put it hand tight. Now, if you had a helper, of course, and there's some applications where you can't get in, you can use this and just have somebody hold it in there. But this, this is definitely a tool worthwhile and, you know, as I always, as I always think, I can use it if I can loan it out to somebody. I know Turbo Steve has borrowed the uh, the laser temperature gauge, and anybody that would like to do a compression test in my circle of friends on the A team, you can borrow this and watch the video. It's real easy to do, and it'll it just confirms that you have a healthy engine or that you need some maintenance. Now it's funny when I first got this motorcycle, I was experimenting with different exhaust pipes i had two different tuned exhaust pipes and it was a lot of fun but the bike always ran to me a, a better street bike if you're not racing it and it's of course a lot quieter with the stock pipes and i've tried to make all my bikes quieter over the years i have the cafe seat that i made but you know what as i've gotten older comfort is <laughs> comfort is king so uh, all of these seats and all of these things that are up there I was younger t 10 years ago and now it's all about just keeping a bike really nice and clean and totally reliable and one kick starts that's the whole deal right now and I think we're well on our way to having that and every time I do any maintenance like this I always think to myself well I love having that new MT-09 I love having the FZR I love having that in my little collection. Every bike is very, very different, but this is the one that's the most different of all. This is the bike that when you get off of it, you're 18 for about 15 minutes until the arthritis kicks back in. Been a good baby and Karen got me this for Valentine's Day and I've treasured it like nothing else. So all that's left now is put the plugs back in. I'm gonna to have to go over there by that tree guy. That is, it's, I don't even know if you can hear it on the video, but that thing is endless. I don't know how, what's taking them so long. This has been a week already. And by the way, these are, these. I think these are worth the money. And normally, whenever I would do any kind of, it's just in my DNA, I guess, from having a lot of old stuff my whole life. I Anytime I tinker with a bike or take anything apart of significance, or change anything, I like to just get suited up and go out for a ride. Today is the exception to the rule. We will wait for a little bit warmer day. Today is not test riding. The only guy, Luciano's probably out test riding, but I'm not. And that's all, it's all in the past. Winter, I think, has finally gotten here. And my ultimate goal is, and especially with this bike, is right now is just to keep it nice and clean keep it running well keep it a one kick starter keep it that every ride is a load of fun and and not ever take a chance on scratching it or doing anything crazy with it it is to me it's one of the things if if you ever have a problem with this if you, it's, you can't just go buy another one that's the problem you know like if even the r1 or the mt09 if you if you were to have a uh, an accident Somebody hits you with a car. Well, you go down and you can write a check. The problem with these things, you can't write a check. You gotta do it. You gotta do all the paint. You gotta do the polishing. First, you gotta find the bike. And you gotta do the things like, we did the top end on this, and I have it down by my desk. It's the funniest thing. I have the original piston, Joe Roselli. We were going to Charlie's house. 
with Joe Roselli, we were going up, up and down the hills of 287 at a high rate of speed. I wouldn't say what. But anyway, and we burned a hole in a piston. And from that, it had reminded me of race days when that was pretty common. But I, from that point on, I said, you know what? This, I, this, if I want to race things, I want a bike I can buy, a disposable bike, an R6 or something. But this... Now to me, and I don't know who shares my passion for this, this to me is a museum piece, it's a treasure, it's something I, I really have this goal in my mind that I want to have this on the day of my death. Ah, oh, the smell of two-stroke oil in the morning. I love it. I gotta go inside and have a cup of coffee. I am freezing out here. So after several cups of coffee, the lovely bride, Mrs. Ertnowski, made a wonderful cup of coffee, warmed me up. <laughs> and I'm still alive after being out in the tundra there. Anyway, it was, it was always rewarding in my past to work on these older bikes, get them running, keep them running, do the testing and the diagnosis that when I do need maintenance, I want to do it. And I want to do it religiously. I want to do it to the best of my ability. And thanks to YouTube, I have the option of sharing it, which I try to use all the time. Because sometimes you can pass on a useful tip, something that somebody can find in their life that'll just save them time, effort, money, whatever. But the biggest thing of all is just to keep these bikes running. And when we go to the market meetup, people like Dale, people that want to preserve the history of motorcycling we all have a piece of it whether we like it or not whether it's modern or old now these bikes are part of my history with motorcycling from all the racing in the 70s and amar to all of the idiotic crazy things i did as a younger man which i'm not really proud of right now and i hope my grandson does not follow in my footsteps but as i look back somehow i ducked all the bullets of uh really being hurt seriously and somehow managed to live to uh, the ripe old age of 75. So, and, and not everybody gets to do that. That's, that's one of the things I think of all the time. But anyway, as, as I get older, I appreciate these memories even more. And thank you again to Karen. She bought me this bike for Valentine's Day. What a special present it was. Luciano and I ran down to South Jersey, scooped it up when we saw how little money the kid wanted for it. And I had, I had spent over a year restoring it. Luciana was a big help. Several other people helped, of course. But most of all, most of all, the biggest thing is this bike is a time machine. And I, before I end any video, I want to thank all the healthcare workers. Guys, thank you so much. I, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. It's, it's, it makes these rides and these videos possible. So if you learned something or you enjoyed this video, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoy editing them. I hope you enjoy watching and hope you'll share them. And thank you guys so much for watching.